The second segment of the nightly news is brought to you by Labri Credit Union. Labri Credit Union. We are not a bank. We are better. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. New rules have been instituted at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex for visitation as the COVID-19 situation continues to unfold. Effective Thursday, the 2nd of September, all those visiting the institution are to be guided by the following protocols. All visitors must wear masks covering their nose, mouth and under their chin at all times when indoors. Masks are also required outside in a small zone around the doorways. Visitors who do not comply will be asked to leave the premises. The pediatric, obstetrics and eye ICU wards will be subject to one visitor per patient and a maximum of 15 minutes per visit, except for the pediatric wards where one parent will be allowed to stay with the patient. Visiting of patients at the National Mental Wellness Center has been suspended for the next seven days. For the full list of new rules, you can visit the Millennium Heights Medical Complex Facebook page. St. Lucia receives its third batch of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines through the COVAX facility. More in this report. The government of St. Lucia recently received 24,000 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine for the COVAX facility. This shipment of the AstraZeneca vaccine was made possible for the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and WHO. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, the Honorable Moses Jabatis, says the government remains committed to make vaccines readily available to the population. The focus is to ensure equitable distribution of vaccine. While St. Lucia will receive its initial supply, the country will procure additional vaccines to ensure everyone who needs the vaccine receives it. St. Lucia has received two installments, totaling 50,400 doses. This third installment of 24,000 doses will provide vaccines to cover approximately 6% of the population as the ministry continues steadfast in its fight against this pandemic. The minister also encouraged St. Lucians to visit the various vaccination sites and get vaccinated to protect themselves from the COVID-19 virus. National Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatis spoke on the effectiveness of vaccines in fighting the COVID-19 virus and says the goal for the enclosure is to reach population immunity. The availability of safe and effective vaccines is the opportunity for us to regain some measure of normalcy. Vaccines undoubtedly is the most cost-effective public health strategy to combat this pandemic and to decrease the burden of disease in our small country, St. Lucia. There is no doubt that the vaccines that we have received today from the COVAX facility will be a real support and assistance towards achieving our goal. The COVAX facility is a global partnership between the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI, Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, UNICEF, the Pan American Health Organization, and the World Health Organization. Reporting from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, I am Fennel Neptune. Over the last few weeks, St. Lucia has been experiencing its greatest upsurge in COVID-19 cases with a positivity rate of 31%. Many have argued that this is a result of campaign carnivals and weekend limes. Pathologist Dr. Stephen King is of a contrary opinion and believes that the Delta variant could be a factor as it quickly becomes the dominant variant when introduced into a society. As it stands right now, St. Lucia does not possess the capacity to test for the Delta variant on Highland. It is also said that once the Delta variant is introduced into a society, it quickly becomes the dominant variant. Over the last month, St. Lucia's COVID-19 cases have skyrocketed, resulting in 1,988 active cases as of September 1, 2021. While many attribute the rise in cases to the campaign carnivals and private parties, is there any other reason? Could it be the Delta variant? Pathologist Dr. Stephen King is not ruling out that the Delta variant is a factor. We've already identified Delta 
in our current um, uh, set of infections. So like everywhere in the world, whenever, you, whenever you've identified Delta, you can rest assured that because of its infectivity, it becomes the dominant variant. So I mean, it's more than likely it's a dominant variant, even as we speak. Um, we don't know that for sure, but more than likely, given the behavior of the transmission in St. Lucia today or the last few days. Dr. King further explains why the labs in St. Lucia are unable to test for the Delta variant. To detect the, the variant, like the Delta variant or the Alpha variant or whichever variant, we use specialized labs. That's what we've been using to date. Um, so we send the samples to CAFA, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, and they have a contract with a, a specific lab to do that testing. There are other ways of detecting, and I'm, I'm, there are certain other PCR methods, which can, PCR methods which can help you to determine that it's Delta you're dealing with, um, but we don't have access to that right now. At this time, there are no deaths associated with people who are vaccinated. Dr. King reminds everyone that vaccination is key. Reporting for the Hot 7 Nightly News, I am Karim Nelson. Government Senator Lisa Jawair is adamant that the new government of St. Lucia is committed to being inclusive and accepting. Jawair on Thursday made a special appearance to the Upper House with the social media influencer Devonte Bonneville. She says this is the first step in showing that the SLP administration stands by its promise. Government Senator Lisa Jawair says it is important that individuals be given a second chance. On Thursday, as the Senate prepared to debate the motion and set in stone legislation to have the records of individuals who had been incarcerated expunged, Jawair sought to shed light once again on an issue and piece of legislation that she believes needs a second look. Jawair has always been a staunch advocate for inclusivity and human rights. During her previous tenure as an opposition senator, she made many calls for buggery laws and other legislation that may be infringing on the rights of the LGBTQI plus community to be reviewed. She says now as a government senator, her song has not changed. I believe that we need to be a more inclusive society and we need to respect the rights of our people and what goes on in their homes. I believe as long as it is not putting anybody at risk, we need to really look deeper at our laws and see how that has infringed upon their rights. So today we are dealing with um, amendments to the COVID-19 bill in addition to expunging the records and giving offenders an opp a second opportunity at life. And with me, my guest, Devonte, um, you would have seen him on special interviews throughout the week. He has been an ambassador for inclusivity and an ambassador for you know, he really believes in human rights. You can ask him yourself. Um, whilst we are not dealing with the Bagri law today, we are dealing with um, giving people a second chance. Devonte has been a voice for young people. He has been a voice for many, and he will continue to do so. During the past few weeks, internet sensation and social media influencer Devonte Monaville has been in the spotlight expressing his views and letting be known what his expectations of the newly formed government are. On Thursday, Monaville accompanied Senator Jawair to the sitting of the Senate. Monaville says he is not discouraged by the fact that the government has decided to begin with the change to the cannabis regulations, but rather he is pleased that minority groups are being given priority and the LGBT community will get their day too. Everything happens in time. Um, let them do what they're doing. What is more important, they will get it out of the way. They will get to us eventually, and I'm hoping that, as I say, and I keep saying that they keep their promise to us. From what I'm saying so far, I'm saying um, um, I really like the direction that they're going in, so I'm super excited to see what the future holds for persons of my community. We all would like to be able to live freely um, in terms of us not being discriminated against or look upon as something different. I think we all would want that. In St. Lucia, Section 132 of the Criminal Code of 2004 criminalizes sexual acts other than intercourse between two people of the same sex with a maximum penalty of 10 years imprisonment. This provision applies equally to such acts between men and between women. Under Section 133, buggery also carries the penalty of 10 years. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzalez. On the agenda for the sitting of Senate on Thursday were the amendments to the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Bill. UWP Senator Dominic Fede says that upon review of the bill, it is not substantive. Fede says that he does not believe that these amendments are adequate in combating the fourth wave of COVID-19.
It is no secret that UWP Senator Dominic Fede has been displeased with the current administration's handling of the upsurge in COVID-19 cases. At a UWP press conference on August 26, Fede was indeed vocal about what he calls the government's mismanagement of the fourth wave. On the cards for the sitting of Senate on Thursday were the amendments to the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Bill. Inclusive of that bill are changes to ticketable offenses and the deletion of Woods Command Center, substituting the Woods National COVID-19 Management Center in the act. Fede says that upon preliminary review of the amendments, it leaves much to be desired. Well, I thought that we were going to come today to debate a very substantive um, amendment to the COVID-19 bill. But what we see here is a, a Mickey Mouse effort from the um, government. Really, I think that changing the name of the institutions that manage COVID is really not going to cut it. Um, we still have uh, close to 2,000 cases. And what we want to see is some real work, um, some, some substantial work being done um, so that we can put this virus under control. With regards to the changes in ticketable offenses for breaches in national COVID-19 protocols, Fede says that he does not believe that alone is enough. He says the issue always and continues to be the enforcement. When we look at that in other aspects of enforcing crime, it hasn't worked. Uh, there are hundreds, uh, thousands of um, unpaid tickets and so what we see is that there's a lack of enforcement. And whenever people believe that they can get away with stuff, I would imagine that um, there's not going to be a feeling of, of obligation to uh, make sure. So I, I still believe that this is going to weaken the hands of the police and the enforcement officials. And what we would like to see is a, a sensible approach to making sure in the middle of you know, a pandemic, uh, in the middle of a wave, uh, we want to ensure that uh, we see that government gives the various institutions of enforcement the very best chance to be able to um, help us to flatten the current curve and to get the population to comply. Fede further emphasizes that even with the fixed penalties attached to the ticketable offenses, it is futile as the system is not reliable. Reporting for the Hot 7 Nightly News, I am Kareem Nelson. Stay with us, there's more news after the break. The second segment of the nightly news was brought to you by Labri Credit Union. Labri Credit Union. We are not a bank. We are better.